Richard Easter is a writer and broadcaster. He started out in radio on BBC Radio 1 before working and writing on some of the biggest shows on TV, including Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Britain's Got Talent and Harry Hill's TV Burp. And now Richard has got a book out called Cover Stories, which is eight classic songs remixed as short stories. And Richard Easter is here now. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I'm well. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, no, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I mentioned there you've had an incredible career and you've done so much in it. Really, you started out working on what has to be, for me, one of my favourite radio shows of all time because you were one of the posse, essentially, on Steve Wright in the afternoon mm-hmm. in the 80s, weren't you? That's right, yeah, late 80s and in, in, into the 90s. And then Steve left Radio 1 and went to Radio 2 and I went along with him. And then I started getting more kind of TV writing work. So I bid adieu to Steve in the afternoon and uh, I started going into TV studios instead. So did you do any of the characters on his show? I did. Yeah, there was a, there were so many. I mean, most of them, the, the you know, I'm, I'm, this isn't false modesty, but the really good ones <laughs> were done by Phil Cornwall. Um, like Mick Jagger. And, yeah, because um, everyone was Mr. Angry and Sid the Manager yeah. and people like that. And yeah, and Mr. Angry, incidentally, there's an interesting thing with him, uh, and and Sid the Manager. That that was a Mr. Angry was a guy called Gavin, and Gavin was Steve's friend from when he used to work on Radio Two One Zero. But then there was Mr. Mad. Now Mr. Mad is a guy called Peter Dixon, and Peter Dixon is the most famous voiceover guy in Britain. If you think of uh, like the voiceover on the X Factor, for example, he's the guy who goes live from London. <laughs> it's the X Factor. That's Peter Dixon, who was Mister Mad. So it's funny to think that he was that guy. Oh, bravey man, man, bravey man, what? Live from London, same guy. But it's amazing how people like Peter Dixon and uh, Gavin McCoy and yourself. All, all working on that show in the 80s, which which you got the impression was just a bit of a madhouse and lots of creative energy from all directions just being poured into it. You've all gone on in different ways to to keep making an impact in the industry and basically a lot of you, other than obviously Steve who's still doing the radio, in the TV side of things. Yeah, it very much was that. I mean, that's I mean, Steve is, I, I would argue, the best broadcaster in the world today on radio with, I mean, all, I with all due respect to yourself no, no. with all due respect to hey, yourself hey hey I, I worship at this shrine of Steve Wright yeah. I mean you, you don't get better and, than that really yeah and and what Steve is really really good at as well as broadcasting he's great at spotting what people are good at mm. and letting them do that and he was very much that kind of thing on Radio 1 where it didn't matter who you were in the building when I started at Radio 1 I was the runner and so I was delivering records around the building that was my job and picking up pizzas for Bruno Brooks and you know Lucas Aid for Gary Davis and all this guy <laughs> I am going to be dropping names by the way there's a lot of clanging <laughs> hey we going like on. it and so my job was to, to deliver records to every single person in the building because the record companies knew that you don't just deliver them to the, the DJs and the producers, you deliver them to everybody because you never know that particular production assistant might hear this single and go, Oi, Gary, have you heard this? And off it goes. Yeah. So that was my job. And what happened was I was in the lift with Steve one day and I'd only been there for a couple of months. And George Michael had just released Faith and he had the designer stubble thing going on. And so I, I said to Steve, You know, this song Faith he's got out, why, instead of Faith, why don't you go, I gotta have a shave? Right. And it's not the best gag in the world, you know, but... And he said, well, can you do George Michael? And I said, well, yeah, I can, actually. And he said, right, there's a studio, there's an engineer, go and do George Michael. So I went and did this little jingle, I've got to have a shave, and he played it on the show. And then he said, right, any other ideas, just let me know. As I say, that's what he's really good at, yeah. well, just spotting and going, there's some potential there. So I ended up... During the day, delivering records and for a half an hour at lunchtime, recording sketches and things. And after about a year of that, he said, stop delivering records, come and work for us full time. So that, that's how it happened. And I mean, you had an amazing career at Radio 1 because you can go on YouTube and watch back some of the footage from the old Radio 1 road shows. And mm. you were there at the front, Richard Easter with the Steve Wright gang. Yeah, it was. That was, a, that was the nearest thing to being a pop star, I think. I mean, I, I did have a stint about six weeks in 1991 where I was actually a pop star. I had a top five hit uh, with I'll Be Back, which was one of the characters. Uh, in Arnie answer to and your the question. Terminators, I used to do wasn't it? Arnie, yeah. yeah. So Arnie was this character that I, I used to do on, on air. You know, and the idea Arnie's raison d'etre was just to kind of open fire all the time. And um, obviously we couldn't do that on the road show. So I said, well, let's, uh, uh, you know what, Terminator 2's coming out and he's got, he's got this catchphrase, I'll be back. 
why don't I do a song? And then everybody can sing along with it on the roadshow. And, and that's what happened. But yeah, the, the roadshow was a, an amazing experience. You did it for a week and you, each, each day you turn up at a different seaside town and you'd get to the site and you'd, you'd say to Smiley Miley, how many today? And he'd look out and he'd go, oh, it's about 20,000 today. And you think, <laughs> oh my God, 20,000 people. And um, I was taught on that. There's a, there's a technique called showbiz pointing. And what you do with showbiz pointing, and I, since <laughs> I was taught it, I've noticed loads and loads of people do this. So what you do, if you've got a huge crowd, you randomly point into the distance as if you're pointing <laughs> at someone and then wave. And then that whole kind of area thinks, oh, they're, they're pointing at me and waving. And so it's just kind of, and then you whisper to your friend who's on stage and then you both do a showbiz point as if you've spotted somebody. I've and seen it, so, I've you're no right, idea. I've seen so many people yeah. do that. Now I know it's the showbiz All point. All the time. It's called the showbiz point. So if you're ever at a gig, you know, and like whoever's on the stage, Lady Gaga or whoever, and she does that and she put, she's not spotted somebody in the audience. She's doing the showbiz point. <laughs> Enjoy it. Um, it's a really interesting concept for the book, Richard. Um, so just explain a bit about it, because you literally have taken eight of the best known songs of all time and kind of done stories based around them. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but the idea is this is kind of like a compilation album on paper rather than vinyl. So I've taken eight songs like Space Oddity, Sympathy for the Devil, Dear Prudence, really well-known songs, and then expanded them out into stories. So, for example, with Space Oddity, we know that Major Tom goes into space, something goes wrong, and then he's lost. But that's all we know. We don't know who Major Tom is. We don't know his history. We don't know what went wrong. And also in that song, if you think about it, he's really calm at the end. Mm. This, he doesn't seem to be panicking about the fact he's floating off in space. Why? So I asked myself that question. That was, that was the first song I thought about, and I was going to turn it into a novel. And then I thought, no, actually, it's a short story, and I can make an album worth, if you like. Yeah. Make a book, which is an album, uh, out of these songs. So, dear Prudence, who's asking Prudence to come out to play, and, and why, and who, who is she? Yeah. So, again, I've taken that basic idea, expanded it out. Sympathy for the Devil, in the Stones song, the, the, the lyrics basically talk about the devil and what he's done over the you know millennia, but we don't really know why he deserves sympathy. And in my kind of cover of that, my literary cover of that song, uh, it starts in Hitler's bunker. Hitler shoots himself, but he doesn't die. And then he realises he's not alone. And in fact, the devil has joined him. And the devil says, you've got one hour to find out who, what my name is. Because in the song, it's, hope you guess my name is the lyric. Yeah. So I've taken that and gone, right, now Hitler, in order to, to find, has got to find out what the devil's name is. And so the devil tells Hitler this story and it all kind of goes on and on and on and then there's a twist in the tale and all that kind of stuff. So it was really good fun to write because you've got an infinite amount of songs to choose from. And it, to picking eight was quite tricky, but in the end I went for two Bowie songs. So I've done Space Oddity and I've done Station to Station as well. And there's a good reason for that. Those two songs bookend the book. And in Station to Station, it's, a, it's an alternative history. Because back in the 70s, Bowie was talking about maybe becoming Prime Minister of Britain. I mean, he genuinely was. And, um, <laughs> wow, what, a, what an was alternative a future adult. that was. <laughs> yeah. So this is an alternative future where David Bowie, David Jones, in fact, becomes the Prime Minister of Britain. <laughs> but it's a very different Britain. It's a, it's a very kind of state-led very right-wing kind of Britain and he's the Prime Minister and he gets taken hostage by a group of people one of whom has a lightning bolt flash on his face, I will say no more um, so that yeah, that's the, that's the book, it's, it's eight classic songs remixed as short stories. It's such a great concept and I mean as with all the best concepts you do kind of think well why has no one thought of this before but equally as you mentioned you know, I, I don't know whether you plan to write a, a second or a third, but but you could keep writing these on and on and on because oh, yeah. there's almost no end of songs you could do this to. Exactly. I mean, I th the next one I am going to do. I'm, I'm going to do more. The next one I think is going to be. Uh, it might be cover stories 80s. I've got a kind of feeling I want to do some some classic. I've already thought about what Tainted Love could be, for example. <laughs> and Don't You see, don't you Want Me has a, sto a story within that song. She was working song. as a waitress in a cocktail bar. She was. I mean, that's brilliant. Yeah, we were already there. We, he, Phil Oakey has already set that, that short story up. But then what happens next? We know that she becomes famous and kind of leaves him. But then really what... I mean, the video kind of played with that as well. But there's plenty of room 
to kind of I mean, Blue Monday. There we go. That's another one. You go. What's? Why is it a Blue Monday? And, you know, how do you? How does it feel to treat me like you do? Who's treating who like who? And what? You know, this. It's just. There's so much stuff to to talk about and write stories about. I mean, there are some songs that might be trickier. I mean, I don't know if you plan to do Gilbert O'Sullivan Zoo Wacka Do Wacka Day, but that might be interesting. Well, do you know what? You've set me a challenge there. I think that <laughs> that. that that will happen. That will happen. <laughs> um, just before I let you go, Richard, um, one more story I wanted you to tell me. Why did Take That almost slap you over the face with a fish? There was no almost about it. They, they, <laughs> they did. Um, well, this is, again, this was back on Radio 1. And at that point, I was, uh, well, I still am to an extent, uh, I was a bit of an indie kid. So the idea that of Take That being this manufactured band was anathema to me because like, oh, I've been manufactured band rubbish. So any chance I got to, to, to slag them off on air, I would talk about how rubbish I thought Take That were. <laughs> and then they were being interviewed in Smash Hits or something like that. And one of the questions, you know, they always have these questions like, what's your favourite colour? What's your favourite yeah. animal? And one of the questions was, who would you like to slap in the face with a fish? And they said me. <laughs> right, so this was, obviously, this was too good uh, an opportunity for Steve Wright in the afternoon to miss because we'd never had them in before. So they, they basically contacted them and said, would you like to come in for an interview and slap Richard around the face with a fish? <laughs> So they came in, and of course they were lovely. Of course they were, you know. They were just brilliant blokes and actually really, you know, way more talented than I was giving them any credit for. Yeah. And they bought a fish in with them. And so at the end of the interview, we, 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 came, we came off air, and I said, look, I'm, I'm really sorry because you're, you're lovely and I want to apologise on behalf of myself. And they went, well, we're not going to slap you around the face with a fish because we, you're lovely. You know, it all became a very big loving, you know. And I, I said, no, I deserve it. I actually deserve it for slagging you off. So they got this huge, I don't even know what fish it was. They got this huge fish out and then, and Mark Owen, like, it was like an unwilling executioner. He was going, I'm really sorry about this. And then he hit me around the face with a fish. And I think, I think I may be the only person who could possibly say that. I think that might be my biggest claim to fame. I, I think you might be. I think you've got that. That one. Uh, Richard East's new book, Cover Stories, Eight Classic Songs Remixed as Short Stories, is out now. Uh, Richard, brilliant to talk to you. It's Richard Easter, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Cheers.